Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be going through just like a kind of a quick broad overview of my budget and how I created it and how I used my overall budget to help create my new makeup budget. I talked about this very briefly when I introduced my no buy for last year. The last couple of months of 2020 I did a full no buy, my first no buy, and it was incredibly successful and it helped me really lay the groundwork for my new budget that is now fully in place in my new apartment and living and budgeting with my boyfriend. So I want to say right off the bat, I am not a financial expert. I'm not a financial advisor, just someone who was not raised, who was not really taught how to budget or how to do anything concerning money. My family is actually really bad with money. Um, so I kind of had to learn everything on my own and a lot of that has happened very recently. Um, so I thought it would just be helpful if you of you guys heard me briefly talk about my budget in that last couple of videos and were very interested. So I thought it'd be helpful just to kind of talk about my experience and what really worked for me. So I'm going to scoot over on this side so that I can pop up like my spreadsheets over here, which yeah, this is going to be kind of boring and talking about budgeting. So if this isn't going to be for you, I totally understand. Feel free to skip for the next video. So I have a paper copy of just kind of the bare bones breakdown of my budget. Let me start at the very, very beginning. So back when I didn't have a budget, I didn't even know where to start having a budget. I saw all of these like outlines and templates where you try to like fit your budget in and it just wasn't working for me. So what I found the best place to start was just to write everything down, see everything, go like through the last month or two of your online banking statements or your paper statements if you have them and just write down everything you spent money on and then start categorizing them. So what I very first started out with this spreadsheet, it has two sides, there's monthly expenses and then there's annual expenses. So I literally just took everything I spent money on and put it in one of these two columns. Was it something I was buying pretty much every month or was it something more of like a yearly expense? Once I kind of did that, I started figuring out, okay, where am I spending my money? How much of it is going towards this? How much of it is going towards that? And really deciding where I wanted to trim the fat essentially. And that helped me create this budget. Now this budget, I just threw in random numbers. These are actually some of the categories that I have in my budget, but the numbers I just made up. So these aren't actually my budget numbers. So in my monthly expenses, I wanted to make sure we had rent. So we have rent at the very top. And the way I organize this is like very, the most important down to like the bottom where I could cut things out. So that's kind of the way that this is set up over here. So we have rent, and then in this example, I put it at $1,000. That's going to be, if you're living by yourself, that's going to be cheap if you buy a city like we are. <laughs> I have two student loans, so I put my student loan one and my student loan two. Um, I've got my phone bill, and as you'll see with the phone bill, I have parentheses here. So whenever I have a bill that is automatically like on um, auto pay, I put it in parentheses and I say where the bill is coming from. That was a weird way to say bill but I put where the bill is coming from. So my phone bill is an auto pay directly out of my checking. And I do that because it actually gives me a discount. I save like $10 a month just by doing the auto pay. So I have it there. Personally, I don't really like auto pays. I've got a few of them here, but for like big expenses like rent and my student loans, I don't do auto pay. Um, a, they don't provide a discount for doing so. And B, it's really easy to lose track of where your money's going. So I personally like every month I've got a calendar reminder, pay my student loan on this date, rent goes out on this date. And I either go and for rent, we either pay online or I use a check and drop it off at the office or for Sally Mae, which is my student loans, I just make sure I submit them on the same date every month. So we've got the phone bill, we've got the renter's insurance, um, we've got YouTube premium, which is probably one of the only streaming things that I have because I spend all of my time on YouTube. Um, I've got that for $20 a month. Um, we did a family plan, which is why it's so expensive. I was spending, what, is it $12 or $14 for just myself for YouTube Premium? Um, and Alvin also had YouTube Premium, and it made no sense for both of us to spend $14 a month when we could just combine and do $20 a month for the family plan. And that's something you'll come across once you kind of have the bare bones of your budget put together. And then you, if you're going to be combining budget with somebody doing it that way. I also have Apple storage at the dollar a month just for like my cloud storage with Apple um, groceries. So I put extraneous here. My budget is going to look very different from everyone else's. Of course, everyone's budget is unique, but uh, we are very lucky and privileged in that Alvin's family actually owns a grocery store. It's not just a chain. They've got a couple of locations and they're all owned by his family members. So we get most of our groceries from their grocery store and we don't really have to pay for that. So we only really spend grocery money when we want to go and get something specific. 
So like I like things from Trader Joe's and I can't get those anywhere else. So we'll go to Trader Joe's or we'll go to ShopRite and pick up a couple of things that they don't have at the grocery store because it's specifically like an Asian and African grocery store. So there are just a few things that we can't find there. So that's why my grocery budget seems to be like so low. I also have a spot for commuting to work, which right now is zero dollars because I'm not commuting to work right now. Once we actually do go back to the office, that I, I really don't know how much it's gonna be right now because previously I was spending, it was around around $100 a month to get to the office four days a week. Cause I had to buy a monthly pass for the trains in order for me to get to my work. Right now it's zero. Uh, the earliest we would consider going back to the office is in July. But once we go back, I probably won't be going to the office every day. So a monthly pass, spending that much money on a pass, isn't probably going to be worth it. So I'm probably going to have to buy either 10 tickets, something. But I want to make sure I don't forget that. So even though it is at $0 right now, even though I'm not spending it right now, I want to make sure there's still room for it in my budget so I A, stay aware of it, and B, have a place to put it once I do have to start spending money on that. I also have a spot for my savings. The easiest way for me to put money aside for my savings was to have an automatic transfer out of my checking into my savings account weekly. So I have it every Thursday. My paycheck comes through every other Thursday um, because USAA gives you your paycheck a day early and actually any direct deposit a day early. But um, was it was kind of hard for me to remember to put in savings. So that's the one exception to the auto auto pay it's good if you forget it is if it's going into your savings so um, i think i started out doing 25 dollars a week which is why i have it here as 40 400 a month because if you start out at 25 dollars, you can bump up to 50 at the time where i was saving up the most i was doing 100 dollars a week into my savings that helped me save up a couple of thousand for our move because we needed first month's rent last month's when well, no, we didn't do last month's rent we did first month's rent security deposit um, and then we had to buy like all the furniture and everything. So that was what helped me. I've bumped that back down in my personal budget. It is less than 100 right now. But as the months go on, I am going to bump that up again to have as much as I can be put into my savings. And I do find that it's actually critical that you budget in savings. You don't want to have your savings be part of what we're going to call buffer money later on. All right, so those are all of my big and important monthly bills. Scooching over to annual expenses, I really only have two. Um, if you have a car and you have car insurance or anything like that, this is probably where it would go. But A, I don't drive and I don't have a car. I live really close to a city. I work in a city. I We have public transportation. It's not the best public transportation, but we have it. And I live within walking distance of it. So I've never owned a car and I don't really want to. I don't like driving. <laughs> so I don't have gas, car payment car insurance so that is going to be different if you do have all of those like alvin does so my only annual expenses are a little bit extraneous but they're ones that i really wanted to invest in the first is a photoshop subscription unfortunately you can't just buy photoshop anymore you pay a hundred dollars a year for it um, i use photoshop for every single um youtube thumbnail that i do and i just i really thought it was a good investment so until i no longer find it useful i'm gonna keep photoshop and that's a hundred dollars a year and then I have Flow Premium, which is actually a period tracking app, <laughs> TMI, but it's super useful. And I got a deal because I've been using the app since it came out that it was $15 a year. So like a dollar and chains a month to have the full premium version of it. And I just find that it's really helpful. So I also have that as a yearly expense. So after all of that, at the very bottom, I have it blank right now, we have makeup slash fun money. So this is where you create your beauty budget. So you tally up all of your monthly costs, which if you have a spreadsheet, you can just use a formula. So in this example, the total monthly costs were like $14.41. And I just threw an example, this isn't how much I actually make, but I threw in an example of four weeks of income being $2,300. So if you do the math, you have approximately $859 of buffer money a month. Now, I personally think that's probably too much buffer money. So if I were, if this was actually my budget, I would probably do a little bit more to savings every month. And uh, groceries probably would be a little bit more, but that's where I would think to tweak that a little bit. Now the makeup slash fun money is only to be a percentage of this buffer money, not the whole thing. <laughs> you don't need to spend all your buffer money. Um, and also personally, I like to keep a hundred, a couple hundred dollars just in my checking account as my buffer. So my checking account is almost never zero dollars. 
I, I never, I really don't feel comfortable unless my checking account is over 150, they're just like at all times because um, some of the automatic payments, they don't always come out on the same date. So I just, I feel comfortable when I have that little buffer amount in there. So for example, in this budget, if I did have, you know, the $800 of buffer money, I would probably put 200 into my makeup fund money. The point is just to make it a percentage of the money you have left over every month. So yeah, so that is how I put together my budget and how I figured out how much I wanted to put aside every month for my makeup budget. And so that's how I was able to create my makeup budget. Alvin and I first did this full exercise, like I wanna say at least a year ago, we actually put everything together. And this is how we figured out how much money we could put towards rent. And that's very important if you're getting your first apartment or you're moving, you need to make sure you can afford everything and have that buffer money left over so that you're not living like super tight or paycheck to paycheck. For my new makeup budget, I do allow myself to roll it over. So um, I believe March, cause we're still paying off. We had to put a, a decent amount on a credit card in order for us to get like the groceries, not groceries, just to get, get everything for the apartment that we needed. So March is gonna be the first month I'm gonna actually take the money from my makeup budget and put it to the side. I'm gonna let myself roll that money over. So if I don't spend it in March, I can spend it in April. And then also anything I make from my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel is monetized. I take anything I make from there and put it right back into the channel. Either it's, um, um, filming equipment, makeup for the channel, uh, lighting, you know, anything I need to film, I always put it right back into the channel. So that's my full makeup budget and how I got to the number. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions on budgeting, moving, or anything like that, let me know down below and I might do a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.